All right, in three, two, one. What's going on, y'all? It's your man, Stephen Bartle, coming back at you with another edition of Bartle's Breakdown. I'm pleased to be joined by Indiana head coach Mike Woodson. Coach, how you doing this morning? I'm doing great, man. How you doing? Doing doing wonderful. Thanks so much for joining. Uh, we'll get, talk about your team a little bit, talk about the non-conference slate, and I'll get you out of here, okay? Okay. All right. Let's start with the front court because it seems as though you've got one of the better front courts in all of college basketball. We talk about Khalil, Kel L. Ware, uh, McKenzie M- uh, Mbako, and Malik Renu. Um, first, can you talk about Kel L. and McKenzie a little bit since Big Ten fans may not be familiar with them? Well, again, both are new guys to our team. Um, the big fella Ware, you know, came in from out west and, you know, I mean, didn't play a whole lot last year and uh, expectations were high for him uh, coming into college and um, he's got a lot of work to do, you know, I mean, in terms of where I want him to be as a basketball player and and helping us win basketball games. And he came in here this summer. He stuck around this summer, uh, put in a lot of work. He's picked up weight. Uh, I think we put about 15 pounds on him um, because he's got to get stronger. But he's a very skilled basketball player, a guy that can shoot it, got good hands. He's long. But I just got to get him where where he's – competing at a much higher level you know you know as well as i do you watch enough basketball these young guys they think they're playing hard Mm -hmm. but there's just all to me it's always another level that you gotta that you gotta find and as a coach you gotta get young players to understand that there's another level of playing hard really playing hard uh mbaco is a talented kid uh that, you know, we kind of fell in our laps, uh, you know, when he decided not to attend Duke. Uh, he was back back on the board, and and uh, we hard-pressed, uh, got involved, and uh, one thing led to another, and he ended up making a decision to come to Indiana. He's a talented kid, but he's young. You know, I mean, all these guys I'm talking about, you know, my team is a very, very young team this year. Um, so, you know, the, the level of play, when you talk about playing, especially in the Big Ten, is totally different from high school. <laughs> and um, But he's a talented kid, a uh, very coachable kid. Both of the kids are very coachable. Uh, that works. And, you know, he possesses a, a weapon. He can shoot the basketball. He's been gifted in that area. Uh, but there's more than just shooting the basketball to me. Um, you know, you got to be able to defend uh, when you play for Mike Woodson. And those are the areas uh, that we've been working with both these young men in terms of the system that I have in play, uh, mm-hmm. getting them up to speed in terms of what we want to do. Um, so, I mean, it's work in progress uh, with all our new additions to our ball club, but uh, we're taking it in a practice a day at a time and see where it leads us. I've read where Malik Renu has really worked hard on himself in the offseason. Can you share some of his progress? Well, he's got his his body in basketball uh, shape, condition. Uh, uh, he's thin and leaned down a lot. And a, a lot of that, again, is, you know, he stuck around this summer and put in the work. Um, and, you know, he didn't play a whole lot last year, uh, but boy, the, the minutes that he played and was on the floor were very productive minutes for us. He's a talented, very skilled guy, you know, at the B6869. Um, and he's got a great body, basketball body. Um, but again, you know, it's up to the coach. I got to make sure that these guys understand what Indiana basketball is about and put them in the best position to be successful because, you know, we do have a, a lot more talent than we've had in the past couple of years, but there's a lot of work that comes with that. Uh, I know it's a, it's a welcome sight to see Xavier Johnson back healthy. What what are your expectations of him this season? Well, you know, I, I don't like putting a lot of pressure on any players, 
uh, when I coach them. Uh, you know, I just want players to understand that you can never do it by yourself. It's got to be a team atmosphere, and everybody's got to hold each other accountable and push each other to play at a high level. But make no mistake about it, when I first started this journey here in Indiana, we brought X in. Uh, we needed a point guard desperately. And X was was really the, the key person, I think, along with Trace and Race, my first year in getting us in the tournament. Because coming down the stretch, X was phenomenal. And then coming in the last season, uh, you, know, you just don't expect to, to lose your starting point guard. And, um, you know, we were expecting big things out of X based on how he finished the year before, and he breaks his foot. And, you know, it was devastating to our ball club because we just weren't expecting that. And, and we hit a skid for about four games until we could actually figure out that X wasn't coming back anytime soon. Um, uh, it took us those four games to figure that out. And then after that, we we picked ourselves up and, and got back to playing Indiana basketball and, and, and started to develop some winning ways and was able to get back in the tournament last season. But we we truly missed X last year. I mean, it put so much pressure on Jalen Safino and Gallo and other guys that just weren't used to uh, being out front, handling the ball and making basketball plays. Uh, but those guys stepped up and did what they had to do to, to help us have a successful season. You mentioned Trey Galloway. Um, will his role differ at all this year? Because I, I, I know that he does a, a ton of things in intangibles that you all love. Will his role uh, differ at all? No, I think it will give him a little more leeway because I think he's earned that right. Um, you know, I made he he and X a captain of our ball club. Uh, and and Galloway has been he's been tremendous this this summer. And, you know, as we've go, moved to this date and time, I mean, he's he's played extremely well. And uh, so I, I think he's deserving of uh, uh, putting him in a position to, to lead and 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 do different things. Uh, uh, but, you know, as you know, only time will tell, man. I mean, we got a lot of talent that's got to be put together. And, um, you know, basketball games are getting ready to start here real soon. So only time will tell when we start playing. Uh, we, we saw glimpses of Caleb Banks and C.J. Gunn last year, tantalizing athleticism, skill set. Uh, what can fans expect to see from them this season? Well, I like to think that, you know, the fact that they've gotten their freshman year behind them, uh, you know, this is a, a big step for both of these guys. And it's going to be a big step for our ball club. I mean, these two guys are going to have to play some minutes and uh, and be productive for us to be successful, I think. And, and they're capable of doing that. They both have shown signs this summer and uh, throughout throughout our, our work uh, leading up until this point that they both, you know, have a future in, in basketball and especially at the college level. I mean, because they both are talented young men that that can do things that can help you win basketball games. So I'm expecting some big things from them as well. I was at Big Ten Media Day, and I saw you guys. I was talking to uh, X and Trey, and they were talking about uh, Peyton Sparks and Anthony Walker, how big and strong these transfer bigs are. Um, what do you, what can we uh, look for from these two guys transferring into your program? Well, some veteranship with Walker because he's been around a while, and he's not real big. I mean, he's a kind of a wiry, thin kid that uh that knows how to play a little bit it does a little bit of everything uh for the position that he plays but the big fella Peyton is 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 a bruiser <laughs> <laughs> you know he he does a lot of nice things uh he's a you know pretty good decent low post player 
but he does all the intangible things in terms of setting screens and, and, and getting key rebounds and loose balls and things of that nature. So, um, you know, just having someone like that, you know, that you can throw in the game, uh, uh, gives me confidence as a coach, uh, if things are not going well for, for Walker, not Wal- yeah, Walker and, and Malik or, or big Ware. uh, you know, you can always throw him in the game and, and get some very positive out of him. You know, I was able to, to talk with Gabe Cups' uh, high school coach. It appears like he might be a fan favorite coach. Why Why? why is Gabe Cups going to be a fan favorite among Indiana Nation? Because he just knows how to play. You know, there's nothing fancy about him. You know, that's what kind of attracted me to him uh, when I first saw him a few years ago. Um, and he wins, you know what I mean? I I go back to his high school and, and watching him in the age. Shit, he always, every time I would watch him, he wins. And, you know, it's it's hard not to look past that. Um, and, he, and he was taught the right way. His dad, man, who coached him, man, he, he's a tremendous coach, but he's done a hell of a job for Gabe. And, and Gabe has kind of capitalized on that. So, you know, he's – Young freshman, you know, he's got to learn the Big Ten and learn what college basketball is about. But I think he's got a bright future in college. Wrapping up here, Coach, I wanted to ask you a little bit about your non-conference slate, UConn, Kansas, Auburn, and Wright State on the non-conference slate. You guys are challenging yourselves this season. Yeah, you know, to be young and stuff. But, you know, it's it's good for our program. I mean, competition is – you know, I've never ran away, as even as a player and coach, uh, all the years that I was in the NBA and I played in co- competition is good. Yeah. It's good for the fan base. Uh, uh, and, yes, we got tough games, you know, with Connecticut. And, and then you got Texas up there in New York as well with Louisville. Um, and then you look at Kansas and Auburn and Wright State. And now you got to go deal with the Big Ten as well. So it's a it's a it's a tough schedule, but you know I, I truly believe if we could get these guys in position, uh, get them mentally and physically ready to go, you know anybody can be beat in college basketball. I've always said that you just got to be prepared and ready to play. Well, coach, is there anything that that I missed that uh, you want our viewers to know? No, not really. I'm just excited to be back again and. Here we go. It's another another season. All right. Well, that's uh, Indiana head coach Mike Woodson. Thanks so much for joining. Make sure you check back with Bartles Breakdown for more great interviews like this. Until next time, holla, y'all. Hey, Mike, thanks so much, man. I really I appreciate it.